And that concludes the six o'clock news. And now for the weather with Antonio Vivaldi. Well, springtime is upon us and the birds are celebrating her return with festive song. Murmuring streams are softly caressed by the breezes. Thunderstorms cast their dark mantle over heaven and then die away to silence. And the birds take up their charming songs once more. Going into summer, beneath the blazing sun's relentless heat, men and their flocks will swelter and pines will scorch. It wasn't that Vivaldi was long-winded or anything, just that he firmly believed in the power of description. His weather report comes from a series of sonnets. They celebrate the seasons of the year, and Vivaldi probably wrote them himself. Some say he was inspired by Baroque artist Marco Ricci's paintings. Whatever their origin, Vivaldi took the radical step of publishing the poems in his score for the Four Seasons. This made Vivaldi's piece one of the earliest examples of programme music, music with a story. But let's go back to the beginning. Antonio Vivaldi is born in Venice in 1678. Daddy Vivaldi's big in the Baroque gig economy. Part-time professional violinist, part-time flamboyant hairdresser. In all things violin, he teaches Antonio some dazzling bowing tricks. In all things hair, well, let's just say Antonio's flaming ginger locks need some serious tending to. They give him a notorious reputation when young Antonio enters the clergy. Everyone's calling him Red Priest. The Red Priest sounds cool, no? Like Black Widow, Iron Man or Scarlet Witch. Trust me though, Antonio's no Avenger. His asthma means he can barely recite mass. So he packs in religious orders and career changes to violin teacher at a Venetian orphanage. And what a stroke of luck. For this orphanage only has the most legendary music department in Italy. Its all-girls orchestra is super famous. In 1716, Vivaldi becomes its music director. This means he's supposed to write two concertos a month to show off the girls' talents. So when Vivaldi takes a second job as chapel master for the governor of Mantua in 1718, he can't rest on his laurels. Inspired by the beautiful North Italian countryside, he produces his next offering for the orphan girls back home, The Four Seasons. And now for the confusing bit. Vivaldi's Four Seasons isn't a single piece. It's four separate violin concertos. And those four concertos are in fact part of one mega piece of 12 violin concertos. The full concerto box sets published in 1725 and catchily titled The Contest Between Harmony and Invention. The first four concertos are called Spring, Summer, Autumn and Winter. Each is written for solo violin, accompanied by violins, viola and basso continuo. A baroque continuo is essentially a groovy bass line played by harpsichord and cello, provides some backbone to the piece. Each concerto is split into three movements, each movement corresponding with each of the three sections of each of Vivaldi's sonnets. Confused? Well, hang on in there. Vivaldi not only printed the text of the sonnets in the music, he even inserted descriptive words next to particular notes. Words which inform performers to this day as to whether they should be playing like a barking dog, a singing cuckoo, a violent storm, and so on. Spring, the first concerto, opens with an infectiously happy theme. It's interrupted by a chorus of singing birds. Violins imitate their trilling, tweeting and chirping at each other. A gentle breeze blows across creeks and murmuring streams. A thunderstorm fills the sky for just a moment, but it's only passing. When it dies away, the birds reappear and sing their charming songs in the new calm of nature. We're then introduced to a sleepy goat herd lying on a flower-strewn meadow. Branches sway overhead and the leaves rustle. His faithful dog sits by his side. The viola mimics its bark, which lasts throughout the entire movement. So much for Mr. Goat Herd getting some shut-eye. 
Spring's final movement is a festive dance of shepherds and nymphs. We hear the sound of bagpipes playing over the rustic drone of low strings. Summer begins in the oppressive heat of the sun. It beats down on a shepherd and his flock. We hear a cuckoo. It's followed by the sweet song of a turtle dove. We then hear a goldfinch, and Vivaldi nails the call of each species. Bang on, like a man who's binged watch Attenborough. A north wind sweeps in and the shepherd boy starts to tremble and cry. Cry? It's just weather. Get over it. Well, this isn't some minor breeze. The distant rumbles of thunder give that away. A violent storm's coming his way, and the boy's crying because he's worried about his flock and his crop. Shepherd boy tries to sleep off his anxiety. Maybe bad things just disappear when you retreat to bed. Dream on, shepherd boy. An invading swarm of buzzing gnats and irritating mosquitoes drives him absolutely nuts. And now it's too late, for the heavens open and the hail falls. The tempest's thunder is conveyed by the wild arpeggios and vigorous scrubbing of the strings. Just what shepherd boy feared. For this balmy August evening has seen his crops obliterated. Good news, though, is that autumn ushers in a bountiful harvest. Peasants celebrate with a village dance, and then Vivaldi inserts in the score the word drunk. Yep, everyone's had a bit too much, and the solo violinist gives us a boozy display of dazzling virtuosity. No one really remembers what happened that night, but everyone feels the hangover the next morning. Tinkling harpsichord and muted strings play some woozy chords as the sleepy revellers open their eyes to the blinding light of a new day. But it's no snooze button today, for it's hunting time. Some horns announce the approach of the hunt party. Horses prance in stately fashion, though their eyes are glued to the prey, a fleeing stag. As the hunt follows its trail, the solo violinist plays the part of the stag, who starts to tire. We hear the noise of baying dogs and rattling gunfire, and the beast is slain. Sad times, but oddly dignified music, for hunting was a seasonal pleasure for the 18th century Italian aristocrat. But now it's time for harsh winter. The instruments enter one by one, piling one on top of the other with grating dissonance, cause it's absolutely freezing, like painfully cold. Perhaps Rivaldi was thinking of that terrible winter back in 1708, remember? When Venice's lagoon froze over? The violin mimics the blowing of an icy wind, scrambling across rapid fire scales. We hear the thunderous chattering of teeth as the entire Venetian population runs about in circles, furiously stamping their feet to keep warm. Could really do with a cosy fire right now. Which is exactly where Vivaldi takes us next, indoors where all is peaceful and content. You know that lovely feeling when you're all snuggled up and can hear the pitter-pattering rain across the windows? Well, that's what these pizzicato violins imitate. The winter concerto ends with an image of people treading ever so carefully on the ice. But it only takes one moron to turn just too abruptly and go flying into another who crashes into someone else before everyone sliding all over the ice, bumping into each other and falling over spectacularly. It's a slapstick comedy ending to the final movement, but Vivaldi's final years weren't so amusing. His spending habits were as prolific as his acclaim, so he died a pauper in 1741. And after that, well, people just kind of forgot about him. It's only because the brilliant J.S. Bach raved about him that Vivaldi's legacy even warranted so much as a footnote. All that for a man who wrote over 400 concertos for every instrument imaginable. 
In fact, all that for the man who popularised the concerto in the form we know today. A piece for solo instrumentalist and orchestra in three movements with varying contrasts of texture, volume, colour, harmony and dramatic instinct. So, for 200 years, Vivaldi was left on the shelf. But in 1926, something remarkable happened. A treasure trove of original handwritten manuscripts came to light. They'd come from a long line of ownership reaching all the way back to that orphanage. They included 300 previously unknown compositions. Years of litigation ensued to allow public access to the papers. And when scholars were finally able to delve into them, they were astonished by the composer's remarkable output. Researchers started compiling biographies of this man whose story was so sketchy that not even the date of his birth was known. In fact, it was only as late as 1962 that people discovered that Vivaldi was born a full 10 years later than previously thought. Now, the 1960s saw an explosion of small chamber ensembles intent on capturing the true essence of Baroque music. They revived this centuries-old music by playing it on period instruments with authentic techniques, what we call performance practice. And once these ensembles got their hands on Vivaldi's Four Seasons, only then were millions able to appreciate its true intimacy and flamboyance. As it became more and more popular, performers started stamping their own interpretations on the piece by adding their own embellishments, by varying the instruments, the tempo and even the notes. Nigel Kennedy's 1989 recording of the Four Seasons truly broke the door down. Kennedy added percussive sounds to emulate the gunshots of the hunt. He added Jimi Hendrix-inspired sirens and screechy harmonics for the Autumn Concerto, a freakishly rock star interpretation that found a massive audience and which became the best-selling classical recording of all time. And it's this variety of interpretations this newfound popularity with audiences across every walk of life that means Antonio Vivaldi is no longer that neglected composer. He's truly, truly a man for all seasons. Well, that's it, folks. Follow our channel, support us on Patreon, listen to the piece in full, and most importantly, enjoy classical music.